Hello, welcome to video number 7,629 about Mastodon bots. I have been on a journey, a journey along the tracks of Mastodon. And I have I started from nowhere and I have arrived to the point where I have a bot. It's called Coding Train Bot. And what this bot does, if you follow the bot, it says, welcome aboard. And if you toot at the bot and use a certain keyword, it will favor it or re-toot boost, whatever it is, your uh, particular post. And I want to add one more thing to it. So I want to be able to respond to a question. So let's just say I'm going to look for any post at me that ends with a question mark. This is going to be tricky because there's the HTML tags in it. I'm just going to look for a question mark. I'll let you make this fancier. So let's add one more check. I'm going to constant regex3, I'm just going to look for a question mark. So, oh, question mark is a meta character. So I think I might have to do this, backslash question mark, or, um, so I want to look for a question mark. If regex3 um, matches the content, and by the way, this is by, this is by the way, the how um, this is like the very basics of making a chat bot, which is just doing like it, basic pattern matching. Um, you know, now chat, chat bot systems use machine learning and try to category, categorize what people are saying into intents and do all sorts of text analysis. But at a core level, you could just use regular expressions to try to match what somebody's saying and respond accordingly. And if you, uh, I do have a set of videos about RiveScript, which is a pattern matching a utility uh, that you can use in any programming, a number of programming languages, but you can use it in JavaScript to build your own chatbot. So this is, you know, interesting to think about what 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 do you want your bot to actually do? Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use regular expressions. I'm going to look for a question mark. So let me just actually make sure this works. I'm going to say I got a question, um, and let me look at the content. So I think I'm going to not always. Um, console log the content anymore. I know that's working. So I just want to, now I want to just look at it. Console log uh, data. What was it called? Did I put it in a variable content? So I'm just going to look at the content. So I am now going to run this. You know, by the way, if you're doing this on your own, you're going to want to have a second Mastodon account <laughs> where you can then test it. I am a weird, crazy person who does this sort of stuff on a live stream, <laughs> apparently. I just assume that the people out in the world watching will uh, interact and hopefully uh, be kind. Okay, now let us run it again. Let's see if we can get some mentions uh, with a question mark in them and see if, um, oh, there we go. Okay, so I got a question. Okay, ooh. That's interesting. Uh, oh, I got a question. No, that's not what somebody said to me. Why? With a question mark. Okay, so that seems to be working. So I'm going to assume that that's good. Thank you for that. And now what I want to do is I want to say, uh, I, want to, I want to do, um, I want to create, sorry, a um, reply. So I'm going to say a, a reply equals, um, the meaning of life is, and I'm going to use this, this, oh, I had this from before by accident, luckily, uh, is num. But I, and then I want to just send that reply. But here's the thing, a couple things. One is I want to mention that person. So I did that before when somebody followed me. So I can do at and then the account, which I should still have. Hmm, I didn't actually save the account. So if somebody mentions me, where do I get the account? Data, account, accounts, the same thing. So I can actually go back, message data, account. I, actually, I think I kind of like always want this. So <clears throat> whether it is a follow or a mention. So whoops. So I'm going to put this out here. So I have access to that account. Sorry that the font got smaller here. Hopefully you can still read it. So I want to first mention that account, and then say, the, but, but here's the thing. You can mention, but it's not going to actually understand it as a threaded reply unless I include in reply to ID. So I actually also need to get the ID, which I have here, message data status ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overload this function with a second argument, ID, 
and I'm going to say uh, in reply to, we got to look at the documentation. I don't remember what it is, but if I look here, um, oh, it's actually under, over here, in reply to or reply to, uh, oh no, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, I'm totally in the wrong place. I was in the right place before. In reply, there we go. I'm looking for in reply to ID. So I want to grab this and I want to put this here and then I want to put in the ID. Um, and I guess what I want to do is, the thing is, um, I'm going to do it this way. This is a little goofy. This uh, probably could use some fancy ternary operator or something, but I'm just going to say, if ID exists, then I'm going to add it. params in reply to ID equals ID. So it's not going to, it's based on whether or not if I send into this function, I'm always going to send in this function some content that I want to toot, but if there's an ID, I also want to add that in. So now we should be good. If somebody asks a question, we are now replying with at that person. Oh, and this should have an at. At that person, did I do that up here? Um, when I, yes, at account. So at account, the meaning of life is, and then the number. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's actually run this. You can now ask me your questions, and I will wait. All right, I'm back, and a bunch of people, or at least two, I got two uh, mentions. So if I go back now and look at uh, my bot account, <laughs> hopefully it's not too spammy. Um, are you for real? And then we look at this, we can see the meaning of life is 40. Uh, and this one has a question like this. Um, uh, yes, we can see the meaning of life is 65. And I'm just curious if somebody, I was looking for one that also has the, uh, so this one, for example, some fake Dan Schiffman. This one was both uh, favorited and boosted and replied to. So this bot will actually do all of the things. It is now a bot, oh, look at this. Uh, oh, I'm just going to favorite this manually. Um, by the way, everyone should look at Alka's Panable Lisa Zhu table. Um, it's wonderful. Uh, I am, will be releasing my Lisa Zhu coding challenge video very soon. Um, and here you go. So this is it. Uh, we have now finished this up. We now have made a bot. We've seen how a bot can post periodically with set interval something. And you might come up with an idea of what you want to do. We have now seen how a bot can favorite or boost things and reply to things. So now it's time for you to be creative. What kinds of replies, what kinds of activity, maybe you have a bot that uh, makes up a poem. I, I haven't shown you how to generate an image and post it, so I will show you that. I've got to make a video to show you how to do that. But there's all sorts of wonderful possibilities of how you can make your automated bot use it on Mastodon at botsin.space. Okay, so choo-choo everybody. <laughs> See you in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this series about making a Mastodon bot. More to come in the future, I, I'm sure. Goodbye. <laughs>